Today, we're gonna to be walking through what it looks like to build a moisture calibration and 190 proof ethanol. So oftentimes uh, we get the question of, you know, what the calibration process looks like. And it turns out it's, it's very simple to build these calibrations for uh, these chemical analyses, such as uh, moisture content or water content and different organic solvents. And so I wanna walk through how simple and fast it can be to build these types of calibrations. So we have a Tango T set up. We're running our, our Tango graphical user interface. I've got 30 samples. They're preheated to 40 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna run through these um, and, and do that analysis, uh, just collect the spectra. And then I have the, the reference chemistry that goes along with them. We'll build out that calibration. We'll show you what the validation looks like and the error that we can get with a small number of samples uh, when we already have those, those samples ready to go with the reference chemistry. So I've got my uh, product selected and I'm just gonna name these one through 30 and we're gonna start analyzing. So sample's gonna go in, sample number one, hit go. So especially with um, aqueous samples or samples where there is moisture or you're wanting to analyze moisture, it's important to have that temperature stability um, set up uh, because temperature can affect the uh, repeatability of the analysis because it affects where and um, the shape of your uh, moisture peaks in your samples. So we can see the tango's running. We've got our status bar running across. And when that finishes up, right now I don't have any evaluation, so it just gives me a spectrum, but that sample's done. And I can move on to the next one. we've been interacting with what we call the Tango GUI, Tango Graphical User Interface. And once this sample finishes up, I'm gonna to switch to our Opus platform, which has our calibration software called Quant2. And the first step of Quant2 is to add a component and we're going to monitor moisture. So we're gonna build a calibration for moisture. And the unit is percent. And then we're gonna go find the spectra that we just collected. So I have them saved to the desktop. Pull them all in. And I have all of the calibration data here. So I can just paste in our moisture values. So these are would be like the Carl Fisher reference values that we would use to build the calibration. And I'm gonna go to the validate tab. Actually, I'm going to, so as part of this, I will kind of want to do a validation to, to show that it is actually predicting. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is a test set validation. So I'm gonna, because we only have a few, you know, 30 samples, I'm, I'm gonna use a smaller test set. So in this case, I can choose, okay, 26% of my samples and it will automatically go in and select randomly um, a number of, of samples that are gonna be in the test set. So the way this works, it'll build a calibration with the calibration samples, and with the test samples, it'll basically just predict those. So those, those test samples are not in the calibration. So this is kind of a, an external validation of that calibration. So now I go to validate. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven samples in our test set, R squared of 99.5, error prediction of 0 0.06, 0.065, and a number of factors of three. So the number of factors is important because it's telling you if the, the model is overfit or not. So we don't want to overfit a model, which is very easy to do with smaller calibration sets or matrices that are kind of limited in their uh, the number of components constituents or components that they have in them. Uh, we can also look at our calibration. So this is just a prediction versus true. So it also looks very nice, but we can continue on here and do an optimization. And the optimization in Quant2, what that's doing is it's looking at different regions of the spectrum and different pre-processing techniques to see what gives the best error of prediction. And in this case, it's gonna order everything by error 
It'll tell you what the, the number of factors is, the regions it's using, and the pre-processing techniques. In this case, I want to be really careful with the number of factors because I know there's just not a lot of components in this matrix. So I wouldn't want to use an eight-factor model in a moisture calibration for 190 proof ethanol. So I can tell it to use a max rank of, let's just say, four. And I'm going to change some of my regions to reduce some noise that is going to be in them and re-optimize. Okay, so now it's got a little bit better. Parameters, validate, okay. And so now 99.97 um, for an R squared value and uh, call it 0.02% is, is our error prediction for the method. And we can also check our error versus rank plot. So rank or number of factors is uh, a measure of the complexity of the model. So as the complexity increases, we want to see a corresponding decrease in the error of the model. So we can see that nicely here where as we're increasing to four factors, um, we are reducing our error. Now, you might even consider using two or three factors for this matrix um, so that, that those would also be possibilities. But in this case, um, our calibration is built. And all we would need to do is save that model, put it back on the GUI, and from here, we can start analyzing moisture content and your 190 proof ethanol.